Good morning. Welcome to English Mirror. Today we discuss one of the path-breaking texts in the field of feminism, The Laugh of the Medusa by Elaine Sixou. The Laugh of the Medusa is an essay by French feminist critic Elaine Sixou, originally written in French in 1975 and later translated into English by Paula Cohen and Kate Cohen in 1976. Let's look at the text. This profound essay, fundamentally calling women in order to bring them to writing, is verbalized in an alluring and poetic language to illustrate the idea of the existence of a feminine writing. Sixu argues in her essay that the utter history of writing has been one of phallocentric tradition, which has contributed to hamper women to think, create, and innovate. She urges the women to shatter the traditional masculine oppressing discourse, which govern literature for ages and create a new genre of writing called Ecritio Feminine of feminine writing by using their bodies as ways of communication and as means to assure themselves into the text, world, and history. In other words, Sixu instigates women to write about their bodily experimentation, which stands for a supplier of sexual urge and drive for creativity. Taking this idea into account, she believes that a woman will have the ability to destroy the past and its repressing language only if she explores her own body with a feminine language. For her, Women's bodies are direct basis for female speaking. She also encourages women to write in white ink, which is a metaphor for the good mother's milk. That is to say, she desires to assert the significance of reunion by referring to the maternal body, which stands for the connection and wholeness. For ages, masculine language has been the predominant and the stronger one. Women had no right to express themselves in a patriarchal world, where, as Sixo points out, they were considered as dark, dangerous, passive, and indeterminate. Under the impact of masculine ideology, women had the sense of hatred toward other women and themselves. To get rid of this complex, Sixu asks women to liberate themselves by writing which relates to themselves, but which cannot be defined or theorized by the male-centered language. She goes further by saying that women are bisexual due to the disposition of their organs, whereas men have no ability to be so without losing the phallocentric masculine characteristic. What is more, she is utterly persuaded that writing is bisexual and women should address both sexes. Like the other post-structuralists, Sixu believes that the women are closer to imagination and fantasies and far from the stability, fixed meanings and reason. Henceforth, the women would manifest themselves through poetry, rather than the prose which contains ordinary and coded language. In her point of view, the language of poetry is nearer to the unconscious because it holds double meanings and accordingly it is closer to the women's sexuality. Derudian deconstruction and uh, psychoanalytical theory has a crucial effect on Sixu's writing. Hence, she deconstructs all the chains which keep women inactive by dismantling gender difference in the language and urging them to establish a new signifying order which is not limited by binaries of woman and man, passive and active, and dark and light. She also deconstructs the theories of Freud and Lacan by adopting Medusa's head based on the Greek myth Medusa was damned by the goddess Minerva 
turning her into a hideous figure with a snake hair like and a gaze which could transform anyone into a stone. She was murdered by the warrior Perseus by slaying her head. Sixu explicates this myth of Medusa's annihilation as men's attempt to mute the voice of women and to break off women's language. Furthermore, the Medusa's metaphor is associated with a modern psychoanalytic analysis of Freud who states that Medusa's head reminds the male of castration. Sixu takes Medusa's head as a proof to demonstrate how the men whose minds are haunted by the idea of castration are unconsciously weak at the sight of women's sex to the extent that they have fear of becoming women. At this point, Sixu clearly debunks the mythology that proposes women's identification is shaped by what she lacks. In the light of French psychologist Lacan's theory of lack, the women's desire for the masculine body does not initiate from the body itself, but it arises from the lacking of the penis. Sixu censors this phallocratic interpretation, alluding that her personal desire of the other is for the other, and this notion of the lacking is lacking and inadequate. Additionally, she denounces the women who idolize the masculine sex, referring to them as woman of yesterday, who is either preserved in the darkness of the past or feliciously renovated by naive moral thinking by their counterparts. Addedly, she sheds light on the Lacanian symbolic order in which he advocates that male child acquires the spoken language when he enters the world of patrilinealism, where it is systemized by order and concrete refusing to obtain the pre-linguistic language of the mother, as he notices that the mother lacks the phallus. Whereas the female child acquires the pre-linguistic language of the mother because she finds herself similar to her mother. As a result, her language is a primitive and silent like the mother womb. By discarding the Lacanian theory, Sixu encourages women to write beyond the order of binary opposition of the symbolic order by utilizing their bodies and demolishing the oppressive structures of the androcentric world. Sixu says, woman must write herself, must write about women and bring women to writing from which they have been driven away as violently as from their bodies for the same reasons, by the same law, with the same fatal goal. Woman must put herself into the text as into the world and into history by her own movement. In spite of the enormity of the repression that has kept them in the dark, the dark which people have been trying to make them accept as their attribute, there is at this time no general woman no one typical woman, and what strikes me is the infinite richness of their individual constitution. Women's imaginary is inexhaustible, like music, painting, writing. The stream of phantasms is incredible. Write. Writing is for you. You are for you. Your body is yours. Take it. Write. Let no one hold you back. Let nothing stop you. Not man not the imbecilic capitalist missionary, in which publishing houses are the crafty, obsequious relays of imperatives handed down by an economy that works against us and off our backs and not yourself. Men have committed the greatest crime against women. Insidiously, violently, they have led them to hate women, to be their own enemies, to mobilize their immense strength against themselves to be the executants of their virile needs. We the precocious, we the repressed of culture, our lovely mouths gagged with pollen, our wind knocked out of us, we the labyrinths, the ladders, the trampled spaces, the bivies, we are black and we are beautiful, we inspire ourselves and we expire without running out of breath, we are everywhere. It is time to liberate the new woman from the old. It is well known that the number of women writers has always been ridiculously small. 
writing has been run by a libidinal and cultural hence political typically masculine economy that this is a locus where the repression of women has been perpetuated over and over more or less consciously and in a manner that's frightening since it is often hidden or adorned with a mystifying charm of fiction that this locus has grossly exaggerated all signs of sexual opposition where woman has never her turn to speak this being all the more serious and unpardonable in that writing is precisely the very possibility of change the space that can serve as a springboard for subversive thought the precursory movement of a transformation of social and cultural structures nearly the entire history of writing is confounded with the history of reason of which it is at once the effect the support and one of the privileged alibis it has been one with the phallocentric tradition it is indeed that same self admiring self stimulating self congratulatory phallocentrism she must write herself because this is the invention of a new insurgent in writing which when the moment of her liberation has come will allow her to carry out the indispensable ruptures and transformations in her history first at two levels that cannot be separated by writing herself woman will return to the body which has been more than confiscated from her which has been turned into the uncanny stranger on display the ailing or dead figure which so often turns out to be the nasty companion the cause and location of inhibitions censor the body and you censor breath and speech at the same time write yourself your body must be heard only then will the immense resources of the unconscious spring forth to write an act which will not only realize the decensored relation of woman to her sexuality to her womanly be giving her access to her native strength it will give her back her goods her pleasures her organs her immense bodily territories which have been kept under the seal it will tear her away from the super egoist structure in which she has always occupied the place the search for the guilty a woman without a body dumb blind can't possibly a good fighter she is reduced to being the servant of the militant male his shadow we must kill the false woman who is preventing the live one from breathing inscribe the breath of the whole woman second the act that will also be marked by woman seizing the occasion to speak hence her shattering entry into history which has always been based on her suppression it is time for women to start scoring the feats in written and oral language it is by writing from and toward women and by taking up the challenge of speech which has been governed by the phallus that women will confirm women in a place other than that which is reserved in and by the symbolic that is in a place other than silence woman for women there always remains in woman that force which produces is produced by the other in particular the other woman everything will be changed once woman gives woman to the other woman there is hidden and always ready in woman the source the locus for the other it is necessary and sufficient that the best of herself be given to woman by another woman for her to be able to love herself and return in love the body that was born to her in women there is always more or less of the mother who makes everything all right who nourishes and who stands up against separation a force that will not be cut off but will knock the wind out of the courts we will rethink woman kind beginning with every form and every period of her body her libido will produce far more radical effects of political and social change than so might like to think woman unthinks the unifying regulatory history that homogenizes and channels forces herding contradictions into a single battlefield in woman 
personal history blends together with the history of all women as well as national and world history as a militant she is an integral part of all liberations she must be far sighted not limited to a blow by blow interaction she foresees that her liberation will do more than modify power relations or toss the ball over the other camp she will bring about a mutation in human relations in thought in all praxis hers is not simply a class struggle which she carries forward into a much vaster movement it is impossible to define a feminine practice of writing and this is an impossibility that will remain for this practice can never be theorized and closed corded which doesn't mean that it doesn't exist but it will always surpass the discourse that regulates the phallocentric system you only have to look at the medusa straight on to see her and she is not deadly she is beautiful and she is laughing men say that there are two unrepresentable things death and the feminine sex that's because they need femininity to be associated with death almost everything is yet to be written by women about femininity about their sexuality that is its infinite and mobile complexity about their eroticization sudden turn ons of a certain minuscule immense area of their bodies women must write through their bodies they must invent the impregnable language that will wreck partitions classes and rhetorics regulations and codes they must submerge cut through get beyond the ultimate reserve discourse including the one that laughs at the very idea of pronouncing the word silence the one that aiming for the impossible stops short before the word impossible and writes it as the end a feminine text cannot fail to be more than subversive it is volcanic as it is written it brings about an upheaval of the old property crust carrier of masculine investments there is no other way either you want a kit or you don't that is your business let nobody threaten you in satisfying your desire let not the fear of becoming the accomplice to a socially succeed the old time fear of being taken i don't want a penis to decorate my body with but i do desire the other for the other whole and entire male or female because living means wanting everything that is everything that lives and wanting it alive the woman arriving over and over again does not stand still she is everywhere she exchanges she is the desire that gives she gives more with no assurance that she will get back even some unexpected profit from what she puts out she gives that there may be life thought transformation this is an economy that can no longer be put in economic terms remember this profound essay fundamentally calling women in order to bring them to writing is verbalized in an alluring and poetic language to illustrate the idea of the existence of a feminine writing thank you for watching this video if you like the video please share and subscribe